Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new series of videos specifically for developers interested in getting hands-on with MuleSoft's new IDE, AnyPoint Code Builder. My name's Dave Norris and in this episode we'll cover how you navigate the IDE and some of the options for customizing your workspace. In this video I'll be using the desktop version of AnyPoint Code Builder but the cloud-based IDE has very similar features so feel free to use either. Okay, so let's open the IDE and look at the basic options for navigating your workspace. When you first open AnyPoint Code Builder, you'll have a homepage that looks something like this. On the left-hand side, AnyPoint Code Builder has an activity bar that has items commonly used in your MuleSoft projects. These include an explorer, which contains your project source files where you can open and create files and folders. It has source control, which will show you files that have changed from your source control system. You can run and debug your Mule integrations. And you have access to Microsoft's marketplace of extensions. And you can change the order of items in your activity bar to suit your individual style. Settings allows you to view and modify your AnyPoint Code Builder configurations. And as your projects run in AnyPoint Code Builder, you can view output and logging information from MuleSoft. You can access it using a keyboard shortcut. On a Mac, it's Command-Shift-U, and on Windows, Control-Shift-U. Just make sure you select Mule DX Server in the dropdown to view the corresponding logs for your MuleSoft tasks. The problems panel shows you a list of current warnings and errors related to the currently open file in the editor panel. So when you're designing or developing an integration, it will help you locate issues quickly. You can access the problems panel with the command shift M shortcut for Mac or control shift M for Windows. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find the status bar. AnyPoint Code Builder will use the notifications section in the bottom right to display progress of tasks it performs. Now the most important part of AnyPoint Code Builder to get familiar with is the command palette. This is the control center for all tasks that you can perform. You can open it by using the shortcut keys Command Shift P on a Mac or Control Shift P on Windows. And by typing in MuleSoft, you'll see all the tasks that can be performed to design, build, test and deploy your APIs and integrations. Let's take a look at how the editors and windows change based on the context you're in when designing and building. We'll cover the details of how you design and develop integrations in later videos. But for now, we'll explore how AnyPoint Code Builder adjusts what is shown based on what you are doing. Here, I have opened an API specification. You can use AnyPoint Code Builder to design APIs right from within the IDE. Let's have a look at how we navigate around. In the Explorer window, you can see the project structure and workspace. In this case, that we're working on a loan process API. On the right-hand side, I can see an editor panel. This shows me the detail of the API and allows me to edit it. AnyPoint Code Builder uses IntelliSense a built-in code completion feature of VS Code to provide auto-completion in editor views. So when editing API specifications, I can press Control Space to see a list of context-aware options. This helps reduce errors when editing the specification. I also have access to a service for mocking endpoints opened using the API console button in the editor window. This shows me a visual representation of my API specification and even lets me try out each request and view sample responses. Here, let's look at the ping endpoint to see the sample 200 response OK message. So that covers the basic navigation when designing APIs. Let's move on to see how the IDE changes when we move from design into build. Here, I've switched to an API implementation. 
This one queries Postgres and MySQL databases to provide a consolidated customer profile. Let's look at how we navigate around. When in the context of building an integration, the project has additional folders available in the Explorer panel. This is the Mule project with all the files needed to develop and deploy a working integration. When you open the file corresponding to your integration, the editors change to show you a canvas UI and its associated configuration XML file. We'll cover building integrations more thoroughly in later episodes, but for now, you can see that depending on the task at hand, any point code builder panels change to let you focus on the most important task. Since we're now developing an integration, we can use the Canvas UI to add modules like the ability to set a variable. Or perhaps they want to connect to downstream systems. In this case, Salesforce, providing the ability to create a record. So when building APIs, you can see that any point code builder makes it as easy as possible to navigate around. In this case, provides the ability to use pre-built components to craft complex orchestrations and transformations. Now, the next thing we should do is look at how we customize the workspace. Let's look at how we change the color scheme. The easiest way to change the color scheme is using the command palette, since it's the control center for commands. We'll open the command palette as we did before with command shift P on a Mac or control shift P for Windows. Then we can simply select preferences, color theme. From here, we can simply browse the different options available to find a contrast that suits our working style. There are even styles designed for different types of color blindness. And if you don't see an option you like, simply browse for additional color themes. But it's not just color themes we can customize. The other area that's worth covering is code snippets. Code snippets are code patterns that you can insert into the configuration files of your MuleSoft projects. You can use code snippets to create reusable blocks of code that you can consistently apply across your MuleSoft projects. Let's take a look at an example. Let's create a code snippet together that provides consistency for logging performance metrics. To create a code snippet, we'll use the Canvas UI. We'll select the plus button, select snippets, user snippets, and then we're gonna use the plus button to create a brand new snippet. We're gonna add a snippet to allow us to consistently insert a logger that documents the processing time for an integration. And we're gonna include specific text that we'll be able to use again and again across our development. The snippet has a common format. It has the title that is displayed in the Canvas UI. It has a prefix that developers can use to access it. It has a description of what it does, and it has a body containing what will be inserted. Since a Mule application is defined using XML, we can simply define what should be inserted. The body in our example shows how developers can use features of snippets to make them more productive. They can insert tab stops, indicated by the dollar sign and a number. And they can insert lists for multiple options, in this case, the logger level. The tab stops allow developers to quickly access parts of the snippet that they can change. In this case, we've defined a consistent format to log performance metrics, allowing developers to quickly modify logger level, the name to use, and the variable name for processing time that might vary between implementations. Let's save it and use it in our Mule application. We can use the snippet in two ways. First, we can edit the XML configuration files directly. We can simply find a place in our integration flow to insert the snippet, then search for the prefix, in our case, Mule API. Then we can insert the custom logger payload, and you can see the tab stops that we've inserted. The first tab stop is selected with the predefined list of logger levels. Clicking tab takes us to the second tab stop, 
where developers can modify the name. And finally, tabbing again allows us to quickly specify the variable name if it's different from the default. The second option allows developers to use the snippet directly in the Canvas UI. Simply click plus, snippets, user snippets, and you'll now see our custom snippet defined. We can simply click on it to insert it into our integration flow. And that's it for today's video. We walked through how you can navigate designing and building APIs. And we showed you how to take control of the developer experience with changing color schemes and adding code snippets. I've included two resources for your reference. The one at the top is a link to the developer documentation that walks through very similar steps to those we went through today. And the second link is for those interested in doing a deeper dive into code snippets. I encourage you all to connect with us by following us on LinkedIn. And if you're interested in videos like this one, check out our Twitch stream. And that's it for today's video. Don't forget to check out the other videos in the series for more AnyPoint Code Builder content. <laughs> <laughs>